Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Enjoy Beekeeping. My name is Gene Rene and today I am building the Cadillac of beehives. This is the double wall Layens hive that's insulated with lamb's wool. Check it out. This is a bag of lamb's wool that I bought. I just met someone in the area that has sheep and I asked him if he'd be willing to sell me some of the wool and he was. And so now I've got wool for the Lands Beehive. So I'm pretty stoked up about that because the R value of an insulated, a double wall insulated hive is the best you can get anywhere. Dr. Leo loves these and I can see why. There's two good reasons why that I'm gonna share with you. Number one, the lamb's wool is the best insulation you can get. And if you're into organic like I am, I like everything organic. I've got black lamb's wool and I've got the, the white sheep. So I don't know if you consider yourself a black sheep or white sheep, I don't know. But I've got both and they're really nice and you can feel the oil on the lamb's wool. So if you do get in touch with somebody who's got uh, sheep and you can get some of the wool, by all means, go ahead and get it. And you wanna make sure it's not washed. So if you're interested, I do have a lot of this. I bought a truckload of this stuff. I went over with my pickup truck and I asked him if he could help me out and uh, I gave him a good, good price for it. So I've got some, and if you're watching this video and you want to visit my website, enjoybeekeeping.com, you can download the catalog if you're interested in getting some. Uh, I have a lot of it, and I'm going to be building hives with this stuff, so I'm going to use as much as I can for myself, but if you need some too, let me know. I do sell it on the website, but the reason why this is so good also is because the hive itself, if you've ever picked up a Layens hive, they're heavy. And I've got, well, let me just get them, out, get them out of the way here. I've got two bags of wool inside. I was just using that for keeping them in there. But the Layens hive, it's easy to pick up. It's probably about a half to a third the weight of a standard 20 frame Layens hive that's made with two by 10 lumber. And just about a week ago, guys, I picked up one of those things, and I don't know if it was that or something else I was doing, because I'm doing a ton of stuff here on the farm all the time. We got, uh, we're got we splitting wood, um, I'm climbing trees to get swarm traps up and down, and I'm lifting beehives. One of those things got me, I don't know what, I kind of got hurt, so the doc says I'm supposed to take it easy, so I'm doing my version of taking it easy. So I'm building Layens double wall hives with the 3 8 lumber. Now, if you're, um, if you're handy, I'll just warn you now, I, I am not a carpenter by trade, and the only thing I've ever built are birdhouses with my grandfather and then a beehive for myself when I started getting into beekeeping. It was just a matter of uh, finances. You know, I, I had to learn how to use a table saw and some basic tools, and I started building my own equipment. And I will say this, the Lands Hives, uh, they take a little bit of skill. So if you need help and you've got a friend uh, who's maybe a cabinet maker or a carpenter or something like that, maybe spend a weekend with one of them and, and ask them to give you a hand building one of these. And if you're a DIY person like I am, I, I, I will just sit and try to figure things out and I will make mistakes over and over. And I can't tell you how many times I've had to go back to the drawing board, but hey, you know what? If you're learning and you're making progress, that's okay. That's what this journey is all about. This is the fun side of beekeeping, uh, or one of the fun things about beekeeping is just building your stuff and then having your bees live inside of it. It's so cool, but um, I will say this, this is my point, is that these are kind of complicated to build. The double wall lands high with the lamb's wool, at least, at least for me, um, you know, I've built a lot of stuff now. Uh, I've been building my own beehives for about 14 years. And this one was kind of up there as far as the skill level goes. It, it wasn't beyond the scope of my ability, but I kind of had to man up that day when I decided I'm going to build one of these. I wound up building three. So uh, the plans that are on Dr's, Dr. Leo's website, horizontalhive.com, it says if you're gonna build one of these, if you got four sheets of plywood, you can actually build three. And I figure, well, why not? Once you set up a saw to make certain cuts, it just makes a lot of sense to just keep running wood through there so that you don't have any variation in size. So if you're gonna do it, 
do it. You know, go big or go home. That's kind of how I do things. So I've got three of them in the works. And let me show you the other two real quick. So before I show you the other two that I'm working on, I've actually just cut the holes into this one here. So this one is ready to go. Let me just turn it. So that's it on the inside. And they're gonna be as snug as bugs in a rug. And uh, they are bugs, so they're gonna be snug. But what's nice about an insulated hive is not only is it beneficial for cold climates, they're excellent for hot climates too. Because if you think about your house in the summertime, if it's hot out like it is today, today's the first day it hit 90 here in Northeast Georgia. So we're starting to feel that summertime humidity. And if you don't have a good insulated house, um, it's hotter than it should be inside your house. So the bees are gonna benefit in either a warm or cold climate by using a well insulated hive. So the walls are insulated with lamb's wool and I'm gonna show you how I'm doing that too. But real quick, let's go over here and see the hives that are yet to be stuffed with wool and the side panels put on. Here's the other two that are yet to be finished. So I just wanted you to see kind of what the guts look like before we go ahead and put on the side panels after we fill it with lots of that black and white wool that we've got. So what we've got, if you're not familiar with the double wall, it's just a basic 3 8 inch plywood and that's what's making it a little bit tricky to work with. If you uh, shoot a staple into 3 8 and you're off by an eighth, you can actually shoot through the wood and onto the other side. So you gotta really be able to have good aim and your cutting's gotta be dead on. So anyway, um, this is a two by four that's just been trimmed down just a little bit. This is where the entrance holes get drilled into. So on the front side of the beehive, you've got this two by four that's trimmed down just a little bit so that you can drill into this or if you're using a router, you can cut the slotted entrance. I actually like the slotted entrances a little bit better. I've kind of discussed that in some of my other videos. The reason why I like them is because I can also put on a Guardian Hive Beetle entrance trap, which helps me keep hive beetles from getting in and it also keeps out the large hornets that will sometimes come and just completely devastate a colony. So watch some of my other videos and you'll see me talking about it there. But I have to get a longer router bit in order to cut the slotted entrances into these. So right now for a customer that, uh, I, I, that one I showed you just a second ago is actually for a customer and I just did everything according to the specs. This spring has been off the hook as far as uh, work picking back up after COVID, thank goodness. So my real job is uh, very busy and I'm very grateful for that. I hope you're uh, doing well. I know COVID has really messed up a lot of people. So I hope that you're doing okay. And I hope that you're finding some joy in life right now. And one of the ways that I like to do it is by exploring nature, keeping bees, doing gardening. So you probably have a lot of those interests too but getting back to the beehive. So this is it. So I'm just gonna spin it around. This is, uh, this is the final stage that you get to before you just stuff this thing with wool. Oh, and by the way, I didn't show this earlier because, well, I forgot to bring the camera out, but there's, there's wool in the bottom of this as well. So there's wool, they're gonna go in here and on the, the, the sides. And there's also uh, about an inch and a half worth of lamb's wool in the bottom. So when I was starting to build it, I had the frame all done up and I'd stuff the wool in there and then put the bottom together. And then I started putting the inner walls on and I wanted you to see this before I go ahead and put the lamb's wool in. So if you wanna see that, let's go do that next. Okay. So here's the wool. This is one of the end panels that's gonna go on here. So you start with the end panel and you just gotta get some wool into it and you wanna fill up the area of it. So um, I'm just gonna put on my eagle eye vision, get my air stapler, my glue, and I'm gonna show you how I put this panel on. Let me get this over here. Okay, let's get some more wool. So let me, let me try to explain the wool just a little bit. This is how the sheep farmer explained it to me. So the black sheep are truly black. And when you shear them and you get down to their skin and the hair that's at the very surface of the skin, it's black. But because sheep are outdoors in the sunshine, 
it kind of gets bleached a little bit and so that's the natural effect of the sheet being out in the sunlight. So it looks a little bit brown, kind of like the sheep are beach bums and they've been out sunning. And so you just take that wool and you just try to even it out and you gotta, you, you gotta find the right balance. You don't want too much otherwise the walls will bulge but you don't want too little because it could settle. So you want to kind of just take your time with it and just uh, pick it out of there. See how it comes out? This, this is cool. And when you handle it, your hands get that oily feeling. Now that's how you know you've got unprocessed wool, is that oily feeling. Now that'll keep moths out of here too. So if it weren't for the oil being on the wool, moths could get at this and eat it up. So that's what you want. If you can get some unprocessed wool, that's the way to go. So that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and glue it and staple it and make it nice and snug. There, that looks like it's going to be pretty good. Now here's my end panel and if you've been following, uh, if you follow the, the directions, each one has a letter so that you know where it goes. This is just one of the panels that go on the ends right here. So what I like to do is I just like to test fit it just to make sure before I commit to nailing and gluing, because man, I tell you, I've torn off my share of nail and glue stuff. It's not fun, but you just want to make sure, and I've double checked this and triple checked it. So you got to make sure all your wool is tucked in, like so, and then you put glue on all the surface areas that that panel is going to make contact with. And again, like I say, the 3 8 plywood is just a little tricky. You've got to make sure you shoot that staple right straight in there. Otherwise, it'll pop out and you'll have sharp pieces sticking out. And you'll, your fingers are going to find it later if you don't trim them off. That seems to be Murphy's Law. So you want to make sure you get those. Okay, so that looks good. We're ready to go. We'll put that end panel on. This is the bottom of the hive, this is the top. So when I put these together, let's just make sure, I think I'm gonna go this way right here. You wanna make sure the top is flush. So you get your fingers up there, squeeze it, then check your sides here. The bottom, if it's off just a little bit, don't worry about that. The top is more critical. You want the top to be flush. And it feels flush, so let's staple it in. There we go. And on the bottom, right here. And then lined up with the 3 8 plywood bottom. You gotta shoot those in nice and straight. Hopefully I won't mess up while I'm being filmed. It's always when you're on TV or something. It's always when people are watching you. That's when you make your mistakes. And I'm going to try not to shoot my fingers. Last year I cut my thumb on the table saw. I still don't have feeling in it yet. Uh, most of the feeling is, well, I shouldn't say, I got about 50%. I got 50% of the feeling back in my thumb. So that's one. That's one end panel. We'll flip it over, do the other one, and then we'll put all the, uh, the front and back on. You see how easy that moved? I, I just can't even tell you how happy I am because it's so much lighter to work with. Even that one that I just showed you a, a minute ago is nice and light. So let's get some more of that black sheep wool. And let's see if we can s stuff it in there and even it out so it doesn't settle. I want it to stay nice and warm in the winter time for the bees. Now our winters aren't as cold as some places are. If you're in a cold climate and you have the option to move, I suggest you do. That's what I did. I couldn't deal with it anymore. Cold weather and me just don't get along. So I decided to move the family to a warmer climate. You can't always do that, but now with all this work from home that people are doing, maybe that's an option for you too. 
That looks pretty good. So we're going to test fit another end panel. Yeah, let's have a look here. So you got to test everything before you commit. Let's spin this around this way this time so I can work at the top. This is the top here. So your top, you want all your pieces flush on top. And then just make sure nothing's out of whack too much. A little whisker you can get away with. That looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to do it just like so after we get the glue ready. So here's our glue. And you, you got to make sure there's no lamb's wool sticking out. So when you try to squeeze it down, squeeze your end panel on, you don't want to have wool in the way that leaves a gap. So it looks pretty good there. Got to tuck that in just a little bit here and then put a little glue along the bottom again. That's the bottom board that I'm putting it on now. There we go. All right. I think we're ready for staples again. Put our end panel up. Line it up with the top. Yeah, thank goodness I got most of the feeling back in my thumb. Or about half. It's kind of convenient when you don't feel pain. But it sure hurt when it happened. So be careful if you're in the shop. There we go. Spin her around. Let's see, right here. Oh, out of staples. Now I'm just using a three quarter inch staple. Now you, you don't have to use staples, you can use nails. It takes longer, of course. So I really do like the, uh, the air stapler, it's nice. There we are, and then we'll just nail along the bottom and we'll be in business. Okay, now it'll be a little easier to work on the table as we put wool into the front and back. So let's go to the table. Let's use up the rest of the black sheep wool. Put that in. Now this is the back of the hive. Now, unprocessed wool is unprocessed wool. It's got sawdust and little chunks of dirt or grit or whatever, but that's okay. That's fine. That's organic. That's what organic is all about, man. Put that in. Now we need some, looks like we're out of black sheep wool. Let's get some white sheep wool in here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So we're going to Put that in and we're going to tuck it in here. And now we can tuck in a little more right here at the corners. So it, it's just a matter of feel. If it feels like it's packed out, well then you probably got it packed out. You just have to keep working with it. I don't think there's an exact how many ounces or pounds of wool that you put in. I think I'm probably using Oh, probably 10 pounds of wool, maybe seven pounds, something like that, that I'm jamming into this uh, beehive. I know, th the reason I know that is because I, I weighed it. I got on the scale, I got a digital scale, and I weighed myself, and then I weighed myself with a bag of wool, and it was uh, about seven pounds. So it's ballpark numbers because not every single bag's the same. And the guy that uh, has the sheep, he's not really weighing them out. He just fills the bag when the bag's full, gets another bag. All right, a little more here. That's the nice thing about this. You can just break a little piece off. So I need a little piece right here. You just tuck a little piece in there. And this feels a little. So you just kind of gauge it by feel. And like I say, you just got to keep it away from the edges so that when you put your side panel on, your end panel, 
doesn't get in the way. Now here's another little spot and you can just break off little pieces. If it feels like it's a little too thin in an area, well then you just tuck in a little bit more. And I'd say we're just about ready for that end panel. I think a little more up here. And we'll, uh, we'll get it going here. Let's get that away from the structural areas where we got to put our staples in. And I need a pencil to mark that. I want to make sure. When you put your end panel on, you want to make it, you, you got to tack it all the way around. But I've got a, a brace in the middle here, and I want to make sure I don't forget about that. I want to be able to staple into that for added strength. So let's get our large end panel. Always test fit, so we're going to test fit right here. Now I want, I want to work from the top, so I'm going to spin it around. I'm very concerned about this being flush with the top, so I need the top near me. Get the top flush, the bottom will forgive you of any of your sins. So you just get it as good as you can get it, and then you'll start to see right there. Okay, that's... You're going to see where you kind of goofed up a little bit on your table saw. If you didn't run this through perfectly, um, that's just how it is. That's, that's, that's normal. It's okay if you're off just a whisker, and that's what I'm feeling right now. I, I can feel I'm off just a whisker, but it's not going to change the integrity or the look of this beehive. It's going to be just fine. So I think we're ready to go there. I do need to strike a line with my... I want to make sure that... I want to make sure that I get the uh, staples into that brace, so I got to... Make sure I've got a way to remember where that is. All right, so we're going to glue and then squeeze it into place. So we'll move this for a minute. This is the last time you'll ever see this because it is going inside from now on. So we're going to glue things nice and secure. I like to use the, uh, the tight bond number three. It's nice because it's very strong and it does not off-gas. If it does off-gas, it's negligible. I suppose everything probably off-gasses to a degree, um, but it's pretty negligible. So if you're into organic and you want to be as natural about things as you possibly can, uh, this is a very good choice for you. There might be some better ones out there, but for going to Home Depot and just grabbing something off the shelf, this is pretty good. So I'm going to glue the plywood and while I'm going along the edge of the plywood I can just make sure that all that lamb's wool is tucked in nice. And I got a piece that I need to tuck in right there. Okay, almost done. I think we're ready for that end cap to go on. This is the outer wall, end cap, whatever, it's, it's item K on the cut list. So on she goes right there. And let's just use our fingers to check to see if we're flush. And once we are, we can staple in. And I'm going to just check a little bit here. Yeah, that's going to be just fine. So let's do this. Come down here, flush again. Okay. Man, I am just loving these. So if you haven't built one yet, put it on your to-do list. You need to build one of these. Let's put there. Okay, go right down the middle. Get onto that brace. There we go. And now into the 3 8 plywood. Can't miss that. Let's get on there. Okay, looking good. Let's get this corner on. Nice. Maybe one more right here. And then along the bottom. All right. I think we're ready. Well, maybe one more right here. 
Okay. So we flip it over. Now, this is the front. Remember, we drilled through that two by four. So I just help myself a little bit by writing the word front. So I don't forget, because once you cover it up, you might forget which is the front or the back. And you don't want to drill through the back. Okay. Let's get some more wool. I dropped a few pieces, and man, I'll tell you what, I don't want to lose any of this stuff. I love this. I, I pick up every little scrap that falls on the floor. Again, I want to tuck in the sides real good here where the corners are. I want any drafty corners. You know, one thing I am happy about is, uh, you know, it looks kind of grungy, right? But there, there's no bugs in here at all. There's a little bit of sawdust, there's some leaves, you know, the sheep are outside playing and they get into leaves and stuff, but there's no insects in this at all. So I'm glad about that because I don't want to get bit or stung by anything. So we'll tuck that in nice. See, that, that's, it's, it sticks up just a little bit and that's, that's what I want because I, I don't want this to settle after I stand this upright. I want this to have a slight you know, cushion to it like this. So I know that it's not gonna settle down later now let's get this side on now real good. Tuck in those ends real nice. This is, uh, I'll tell you what, this is a really fun project to do if, you've, uh, if you're you know, doing a little father-son thing or if you got a bee buddy that you know of. This would be a really cool project to work on with someone. Or, you know, if you have folks come over and you want to show them what you've been doing with your bees, you know, you could have one of these uh, and show them what you made. Okay, so there's a little gap right here. I want to stuff some wool in, but we're going to have to do it like this. That's along the bottom, so we just tuck it in like so. Now, got some extra there. Tuck all that in, get it away from the wood. Got a little bit too much wool right there. So that's what's nice about it is you can just pull off the extra. It's like cotton candy, only a little heavy, heavy duty version of cotton candy. Got a little too much there. Tuck that in nice. I might have just got overzealous on this end of it. I shouldn't have probably put as much in there, so I'm gonna to have to squeeze this down just a little. I don't think the wall's gonna bow, but I wanna make sure that I don't have any wool making contact with the wood that I wanna to secure to. Yeah, I might have to pull a little more of this out, stuff it right there. I think we're ready. Well, let's test an end panel. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna spin this because I like the top by me. All righty. I need to mark where my brace is. Okay. Let's go ahead and finish this one up. You know, after you put these end panels on, you're ready to go and cut holes for entrances. They really don't take that long to build, so I'm pretty pleased about that. It, it, it is a complicated build, at least it was for me. You guys out there in the audience, you guys might be way ahead of me on this. I'm kind of a slow learner. I have to do a lot of trial and error. I am not what you would call a gifted person. <sighs> so I'm one of those ones I just gotta kinda plow through things until I figure it out. And uh, I have to read and reread and uh, still make some mistakes anyway. But if that sounds like you, you're in good company. I'm right there with you. Some of you guys out there, you might be some gifted ones and you need to hang around with me and show me how to do stuff a little bit more efficiently. 
So maybe uh, you guys can uh, come check out Northeast Georgia one day and get a nickel tour of the farm here. Show you the bees outside, show you the workshop. Almost there, just gotta do a little tucking in. Like I said, I put just a little more than I probably needed to right there, but you know what? They're gonna be nice and snug. There's no two ways about it. These bees are gonna be very pleased, I think. Very happy with this uh, beehive. So again, I just wanna tuck in real good. Take away any excess away from the edges here. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's put on that final end panel. Flush with the top, that's where I wanna be, right there. I'll just check the side a little bit. Yeah, needs a little there. These come together pretty good. As long as you paid attention to your measurements, you'll be fine. That should be good there. Okay, spin this here. Get along the bottom edge. Okay, I hope that's uh, not a bad thing that I'm doing. I use my finger to kind of line up because it sometimes moves on me like this. So I try to line it up first and then get out of the way. So if I'm breaking safety rules, maybe one of you guys better tell me. I'm trying not to. I'm try I try to practice safety rules. There we go. A couple more probably will do. One there. One there. Okay. So I think I can put one more right here. So that is the box. And, it, and again, I, I cannot stress to you how much I like the fact that I can just pick this up, no problem. That's worth a lot right there because these hives are monsters. And uh, yeah, there's no heavy lifting of the frames, but man, when you got to put one of these out in the bee yard somewhere, you got to be careful. You, you need a bee buddy to help you do that. While I'm finishing up this last beehive, I just thought of something that I forgot to mention to you. We used to have classes here at the farm pre-COVID. Well, hopefully that's starting to get behind us. And if you would like to come out and do a workshop with me, let me know. I'm just trying to get a feel for if you're interested in doing it. Now, the reason why I was joking around about being a black sheep is because I'm kind of a black sheep when it comes to beekeeping. I don't do things the conventional way. Um, I'm looking for a natural, sustainable, chemical-free approach to keeping bees, and that's what I'm all about. And uh, I wanna pass some of that on to you. And I wish I knew more about bees. I've been doing them for about 14 years. I don't know everything there is to know about bees, but what I do know, I'd like to share with you, and I have a couple ways that I can do that. One is if you visit my other website, learnbeekeepingonline.com, you can go there, you can watch a free introductory video, and there's several uh, videos in the paid course. So it's part one of a two-day program that I intended to do pre-COVID, and then COVID came and interrupted all that, but I'm hoping I can get back into that this year. So that's day one, uh, because you know I, I thought about you know doing the lecture as part of day one, but I hate lecturing, number one. Number two, you might not even like listening to lectures. And if you're like me, I kind of sometimes get burned out after about an hour or two. I can't just sit and listen, even if it's stuff I want to learn. It's hard for me to just take it all in at the, you know, six, seven hours of this stuff. So what I did was I've got the videos all broken up. I think I've got about seven hours of content. You can just watch them whenever you want. That's your day one. You buy that. That's day one for you, and you can watch it as many times as you want because the videos are yours to keep, and if I come uh, along and record some more information, I add that to the course, and it's no extra charge to you. Uh, day two is this kind of stuff. It's all the fun stuff. It's the workshop. It's the hands-on. It's the keeping bees. This is uh, the stuff that's going to keep your attention for hours and hours, I'm sure, if you're like me and you like bees. So um, 
Send me an email. Let me know if that's something that you would like to do. You know, I talk about people coming out to the farm all the time. I give them the nickel tour when I have time, but I want to actually start up a workshop. I'm thinking of maybe doing one this summer. Now, it gets really hot here in Georgia, but let me know if you're interested. And also, too, this fall, I want to have a couple of workshops here where we can do the fun stuff. So it's a two-day program, but remember, day one is up to you. You buy the online course, that's half of the course, you only pay for the half. So day one, you just buy that. Day two is the same price, but it's this. It's coming out to my farm here in Northeast Georgia, taking a tour of the area. Man, I'll tell you what, if you've never been to Northeast Georgia, you might not want to go home. That's why I moved here. So it's just beautiful. I love it here. But I want to be able to teach you about bees. Now, if we can't actually open up a beehive, we've got beehives with looking glasses so that we can just look right inside and see what the bees are up to that day. Because you can't always open them, but we can take a look and see what the bees are doing. So that's a part of the program here at the farm. So let me know if you'd like to come check it out. And again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support and uh, I, I hope that you like the content that I'm putting out. I can't always stay on top of it. Sometimes my real job gets in the way and I just don't have time to get all the videos out. I've got so many videos that I've actually uh, got footage for that I just need to sit down and kind of tweak them and put them together so that they make sense so that you can watch them without you know, pulling your hair out and uh, I try to do my best and so I'm just an amateur when it comes to putting all that together so I hope that you enjoy it and uh, I hope that I can impart something to you that will help inspire you in some way to get started with keeping bees or if you kept bees in the past and you kind of got away from it I hope this reignites something with you so that it gets that spark going again because you got to have some fun things to do that's the spice of life and I hope that I can give that to you in some way so thanks again for watching. I really appreciate everything that you guys do as far as supporting the channel. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.